Hoffer and then acclaimed light. Marble Hero down on the fence, followed by Ho in one. Babinski making tracks as they corner into the stretch where Chevalier Star and Raging Bull have dominated the speed. Sensation moves up to join them. Super Leader asks the question. Acclaimed light, enormous honour, and then Ho in one. Chevalier Star beat off Raging Bull. Sensation still there. Super Leader, acclaimed light bursting through with enormous honour, but still Chevalier Star from Sensation. Enormous honour. Ho in one, deeper out, sweeping up late. Enormous honour trying to get to Chevalier Star. What a fantastic finish. Ho in one, the widest. Oh, very close. Maybe Ho in one from Enormous Honour. Not a great deal in it. Super Leader Sensation. They got to Chevalier Star in the last 20 metres. Marvel Hero, Raging Bull, Verbinski, and then Grandstand finish. Ho in one. Sean Woods, Gavin Lorena. for Derek Long, shows the lead, Gallant Rock, Forever Posh, deeper at Excitable Boy, Mr. Right, Excitable Boy, Mr. Right, they're going up to take the lead, Mr. Right, dash clear, here's St. Yazan chiming through late, St. Yazan after Mr. Right, Mr. Right in front, St. Yazan's coming through very quickly, oh, it's another close go, St. Yazan or Mr. Right, I couldn't separate them. We've had three very tight finishes, Mr. Right, St. Yazan, Getting his head down late, but it'll be Mr. Wright over St. Yazan, King of Household, rocketing into third. So it's the South African rider taking out the third leg, Gavin Lorena on Mr. Wright. Beauty Kingdom laid up to join Club Life, Trendy Win, Super Roy, Sparkling Sword, and then further back to win it, but taking the lead, Beauty Kingdom, Super Roy on the scene quickly, Super Roy sprinting to the lead from Beauty Kingdom, Sparkling Sword, but it's Super Roy clear, another one for Gavin Lorena, and it might be the championship. Super Roy wins from Sparkling Sword, Beauty Kingdom possibly third, getting home late was Winham. And then further back to win it with club life not far away from trendy win. Gryffindor couldn't come on in the stretch, neither could Jaeger Bomb. Super Roy, a double for Gavin Lorena, sparkling sword, Joe Marrera. So Super Roy, Gavin Lorena, Joe Marrera taking second. Let's send our attentions to the uh, to the stayers contest. Right. It will come up. Thank you. Now this is the highlight of the day for me. This I thought this was one of the best rides I think I've ever seen in terms of its all-round skill, uh, start to end. And Gavin Marino is clearly a name that we're going to get to know much better on the international scene over the next five years. I just want to quickly, you know, and I'll pass over the baton to you in a minute. The moment this is Gavin Marino. This is Arch Villain, who was a 25 to one shot and had previously not been ridden leading. He'd been sat just off them. He went out, Gavin Lorena, to the weighing room and said, look, I don't think there's going to be much pace on. Are you happy for me to lead? They've obviously looked at it and gone, well, something needs to happen to get this horse back on, on song. Yeah. Do what you want. He gets from a wide draw, uh, arch villain, into the, into the lead, perfect position, without using up too much energy. But what is beautiful, and we'll highlight it for you on this, is just the way he stacks them up. And you can see him just lift the reins up slightly, take a tug on the reins, and then go his pace. Two, two parts of the race that we'll touch on. Firstly, the thing you're about to see the start, but then later on the mid-race. The mid-race move of Kenichi Kazoa on Sea of Heaven and the, the mid-race decision by Gavin Arena not to panic when that move, move happens in front of him. It was, it was brilliant you know, on every level. It really was, yeah. And this was not some favourite, remember. This was, as always just said, a 25 to 1 shot who appeared out of form. And it's got the headgear on for good reason. The first thing we both noticed independently watching this race live was what lovely hands he had as he slid up on the outside there and he immediately 
it seems to me has formed a communication with the horse. He's got the horse's mouth. Mm. Uh, you can see that the, the rain's a nice long rain. He has a horse relaxed, and he's basically in charge of the rider. He is basically pulling the strings from this point on, and the horse is a willing partner. And you could see that all the way through this race. It really was artistry. This this rider. Yeah, we won't we won't see that move sadly, where he just sort of stacked them up, but. It was it was excellent because he's got to the lead. He's now dancing his own dance out in front, and then we move on to to later on where he has a decision to make because Kanichi is over in Sea of Heaven. We'll highlight them for you here. I mean, let's not make any bones about it. He said uh, he said as well when he came back into the way that the horse was pulling, he couldn't hold him, yeah. and, and he's pulled himself to the front. It means that then Gavin Lorena now has a decision as a rider: Do I let a horse who is clearly traveling? too powerfully admittedly but but powerfully who is the, the pre-race favorite etc do i let him go on four or five lengths do i hope he comes back to me do i sit and carry on in this beautiful rhythm that i've established from the start or do i press forward in the end the decision that lorena made w was 100 percent the right decision and that was not to panic and to let the horse just take himself fluently into the straight which he'd which he'd worked so hard to get himself in a position to do yeah that's right and that's, uh, to my eye this is a, an example of a rider riding his horse to pace rather than to position. I think our domestic riders, perhaps understandably, because we have such an emphasis on riders appearing to try hard, which is a current a theme of British sport in general. I think that the punters want to see in this situation Lorena do something. Mm. They don't want him to do what actually won in the race, which is sat there, sit there, and say, why hasn't he been more proactive? But the reason is he knows what he's doing. He knows that the best way to ride a horse is to let it run evenly until the closing stages. A lot of people talked about um, Sea of Heaven and uh, we should just mention that. What, what, what did this tell you about Kanichi Kizawa and what did this tell you about Sea of Heaven? Well, Japanese, the tempo of Japanese racing is for the most part very different to over here. Very large fields, very strong gallop. Not this, that is a generalization, but he simply couldn't adapt to a hard pulling horse in a staying race run at, at a British tempo and uh, he was man enough to admit afterwards that the horse had got the better of him and that he'd basically just been carted through the race. I want to highlight if I can Noble Silk just on the outside because time and time again this horse gets flagged up in these two mile contests particularly yeah. Ascot and lots of people side with him. I don't think he's won for some time now and I think his recent record does, does not speak too favourably. I think it's something like 1 from 23 for, for Noble Silk of, of late last few years. Once again, he's travelled quite powerfully. Yes, he's been posted wide, which isn't ideal. But last time in Ascot, he was on the inside. He's found trouble. He was still beaten a similar distance. This is a horse that, at the moment, is finding ways to get himself beat. Well, here, Jarné on board him faced what Ron Atkinson used to call a crowd scene on the inside. There's no way for him to ride the type of race he'd like to ride, which is to split horses and to kid this old rascal. So he ends up showing Noble Silk way too much daylight, and it gives. Mm. Noble Silk, plenty of time to just reverse out of it as he's, he's fond of doing. But I don't think this is a horse you should forget, this great horse. I think this race did not go for it. Are you going to give him another chance? I am, yeah. I'm fully aware of his past history of, uh, mm. of jerking it. But I, I think he's a well handicapped animal. I think if he could slingshot between rivals, he can win a race. This is Arch Villain on the inside. Uh, Lorena didn't panic. Sea of Heaven, who had pulled his way to the front, went down by a head. I think one of the things about riding is that we can appreciate riding through not being riders simply because we can appreciate the physics of the whole thing, mm -hmm. which is we know that smoothly does it every time. And it's important from a physical point of view for horses to run as evenly as possible, not to be jerked around and forced to run hard in various parts of the race. It's also import important to go the, the smoothest way round, the shortest way round, sorry, which he did here. But the third skill, Ollie, and the thing that I think, if I was a trainer or I was an owner who had a retained jockey, I would put above all things, is the hands to settle horses. Mm. Horses pulling out, you see, is a bad habit. And if you have a stable jockey with bad hands, he will give bad habits to all your horses, and that will hold, that will limit their potential. You have a, a, a man like Lorena riding them, they, they learn to settle, they learn to, um, to listen, they learn to race evenly mm. and as a result they run bigger figures and they run faster times mm. and that's why, by this. that's why I think this should be taken quite seriously what, what he showed. Okay, and actually um, before we move on to this, we'll just leave the ratings up for you to see there, here, yeah. here on the verdict. 
Chris Cook in The Guardian has written a very interesting article about how Gavin Lurina has extended his stay here in the UK in the hope of getting rides at different tracks at other tracks. He doesn't want this just to be a Shergar Cup visit. He wants this to be a, an experience outside of Africa and other venues as well. And yet no British trainer, no English trainer, has called on his services as yet. Now it's not too late. He may very well get opportunities later on in the week. But what, we're early uh, Tuesday, uh, the three days after the, the Shergar Cup. Uh, uh, British trainers missing a trick if, if they let Gavin Arena just uh, enjoy a holiday without seeing a race course on their horse? Well, I think they are, but it's not the short-term effect of Lorena that interests me. What interests me are, are major operations watching this. You see, the thing we, that we saw with James McDonald was he had the supply of mounts from Godolphin to show what he could do. But giving him a few rides here and there this week is not really going to change the whole landscape of horse racing. Mm. But a major operation recruiting his services, as I think they should, yeah. this guy's half an hour better than some people that have big jobs. He really is good. Yeah. And I think horse racing sometimes, it's slow to react, but they do get the right answer in the end. And yeah. I think he will, he will make it. Right. He will get a big job because there's enough intelligent people in the world mm. to recognize this is not just a case of a, a rider stumbling into a couple of lucky winners, mm. but someone who has made a horse, drawn badly, out of form, win a race through his actions, which are a is a repeatable skill mm. and not randomness. On the inside, Ox Villain fighting back, and Ox Villain, what a debut for Gavin Lorena, he's won it! Truly amazing, just to, just to get on the horse's back was, was just amazing with the crowds and, and all the people, and to ride on this, you know, uh, world-renowned course, it's, it's truly amazing, and to, you know, to finish it off with the wins even better. It is, ladies and gentlemen, the rest of the world. Famous victory for the rest of the world. They take the Dubai duty-free Shergar Cup.